How's it going, everybody? Oh, sorry if that clap was loud. It might have been kind of loud. Oh, fuck, my own stream is... Stop. Okay. So we're doing something a bit different, because uh, the Hive Swap Friendship Simulator uh, dropped today, and I don't know, it's got... Oh, I gotta stop handbrake from processing video files. <sighs> so I played a little bit of this, um... Oh shit, I didn't set up all my... God, I'm getting ahead of myself. And but There we go. Now everything's ready for stream. Okay. So, as far as I can tell, from, and from what I've heard, and from just playing it a bit, uh, the whole thing is written by Andrew Hussey, which, um... Hot damn, considering, you know, it's... Oh, it changes color. Nothing happens if I click on... Uh, there are probably Easter eggs somewhere on here. But I guess this is us. We're just like a generic... This has to be non-canon, because, like, that's not what the humans, you know, look like. That's, like, the generic MSPA reader. So. You've just crash-landed on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smoldering wreckage of your ship. You're now completely alone in a strange world. Desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you are desperate for... Friendship. Won't someone on this godforsaken rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do. You're not that picky. Hang on. What's this now? Is someone approaching? I, 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 I tried out a little bit of this chick. I haven't tried out this guy. But it's like... It was getting pretty fucking good. Yes! Someone is approaching. A strange gray-skinned alien. A alien? Alien? Alien. Clad in blue. Perhaps they will make a good friend. Dear God, and just what are you supposed to be? Your staring reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in some need of medical treatment. You're also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Oh, oh my. Mm. <laughs> How funny this is. How very droll. Now, I didn't pick it up, because if you've never read Homestuck or whatever, each of the trolls has their own typing quirk. And I was like, okay, so she's got, like, two extra eyes. And I was like, three eyes. Three eyes. I was like, uh, there it is. You want to be my friend. I don't think I'm going to drag out the eye sound on all of these, because she uses all, a lot of... Oh, she didn't use it there. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if that was intentional. Some trolls, their, their quirk's different depending on whether or not they're capitalizing certain things. It's too much. This this thing at my doorstep, wishing to know me in any capacity. The hilarity somehow escapes my ability to capture with maniacal laughter. How rare. You apologize for your presumptuous request. You hang your head, turn around, and begin to walk up. And just what the fuck do you think you are doing? Who invited you to leave? Who invited you to leave? You stop in your tracks, obediently, and turn to face her again. Your possibly broken ribs are throbbing in pain, but this does not strike you as the right moment to exhibit weakness. It dawns on me that we may have gotten off on the wrong saunter pod. Which is troll lingo for foot. There's this a whole lot of that. Where are my manners? Ghastly behavior on my part. After all, it isn't your fault you seem to be some sort of hideous freak, is it? And such a tragic creature cannot be held responsible for such a devastating shortfall of social competence. I would weep for you, really, except that crying out of three eyes at once gets a bit messy. So instead, I think I'll be saving my tears for someone less offensively worthless. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside, or if she just, uh, or if she just got you to stay a little longer so she could insult you some more. I think we're gonna turn the volume down just a little bit. A little, a little hard to like think and speak with. There we go. Let me know, let me know what you guys think. Sound ways. Um, actually I guess I can raise it on your end here. There we go. Oh fuck. Uh, hold up. There's a, there's a text log. What was that she said? Uh... You aren't sure if she's running. You try to remain stoic while your confrontational new friend decides what to do with you. Unfortunately, you sniffle slightly. Slightly. 
Hey, Ginseng0204, how's it going? Hey, Live High. Yeah, this dropped today, unbeknownst to me. So this wasn't originally the plan, but then we're just they were just like boom, high swap friends him, and I'm like, well, I have to fucking stream it on 4:13. It's fucking Homestuck Day. Oh, oh, my, oh that, oh my, oh dear, you're sad. <laughs> so amusing to me, mildly endearing even. Perhaps I'll decide later if it's endearing. Once I have more information. It's entirely possible I will retroactively decide it's disgusting. But for now, try to put yourself at ease, you completely pitiful fool. Not one more sniffle. Do you understand? You nod while practicing while practicing exemplary control over your nose. Oh, hold up, why isn't uh, why isn't chat showing up? Hold up. Chat. Chat. Hmm. Hmm. It should be. It should be. Over there. Fuck. Give me one hot second. Uh. It should be right. That's the right URL. How do I. Fuck. My apologies. We were going pretty good. Give me a sec, because chat should be... You, know, you, you, you can't see where the window is supposed to be, but it's supposed to be way over on that side. What if I start a new thing? A second chat. Shit, what's it supposed to be? Audio, color source, image slideshow. It's media source, right? Shit. Nope. That's not it. What is this categorized as? Fuck. Now Streamlabs website doesn't want to work. Oh, I'm not logged in anymore. That might be why. Hold up. Okay, so the alert box wouldn't have worked either. Okay. Sorry for the... Do I have to stop and restart the stream? No, that's only local files. Remove. Audio input, audio output, browser, color source, display capture, game capture. I thought it was media source, and then you put in the URL for it. Hold up, what if I duplicate? I can't duplicate it. Oh! Oh! It showed up! There we go, there's the hmm. Alright, sorry about that. Alright, whoop, oh, oh, fuck, I missed the thing. Alright, so where were we? Uh... Yeah, practicing exemplary control over your nose. You've gotten yourself so at- oh, this is her. You've gotten yourself so agitated, I wonder why. You have nothing to worry about from me. Of course, of course I will be your friend. Conditionally, I mean. There's a chance the designation will be formalized, if you behave in ways that I approve of, starting now. Let's call it a friendship in progress. Agreed? Your heart swells! This is what you've been waiting for! A new friend! Oh gosh! All you have to do is try to not fuck up anything at all, possibly for many hours. Come into my hive. This way, after me, you look like you could use nourishment. Swipe left. Is that a... no, that's not a... that's not a dual scar thing in the bag that's, uh, what's her face? the empress to be I don't know what it is that whatever you are eats generally but it doesn't matter 
You will eat whatever it is I have on hand if I tell you to. How does that sound? How does it sound? Now, I already know if we say this, like, we immediately get fucking booted and rejected, so... We can skip through the dialogue really fast if I hold down control, so, like, we can get back to this point in seconds. So it's like, I'll just, like, show you. Get the fuck out of my face and never come back! REJECTION! Uh, yeah, this is just us. This fucking crash ass landed here for no good reason. Beer, beer. See? And here we are. Sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. Eleven? Eleven. Obviously it sounds good. You will definitely enjoy it. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreement coming from one of my friends. I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. You say, oh yes, absolutely. You're not as enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. Lost? Oh, like the show Lost? I've never seen it. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize one of your arms is probably broken too. You'll try to make sure she doesn't notice though. It would probably leave a bad impression. Come with me. There's something I need your help with. You follow her- <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. You follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. You suppose she's going to fix you something to eat. Soon. As promised. You pass through her kitchen and... Out the other side. To another room. Okay, you guessed dinner can wait. This way, try not to let any of your broken limbs slow you down. A good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments cause any inconvenience. Oh, so you guess she does know you're injured. Fair enough. You hobble a little faster through another door into a much darker room, and now down a flight of stairs. This is the Hive Swap Friend Sim, which is a spin-off game of Hive Swap, which is an adventure game, which is a spin-off of Homestuck, which is a webcomic. So we're like, we're like three layers deep in this shit. We are burrowed fuck deep. I'm playing it, and this wasn't the plan, but it came out today, and it's also 413, which is International Homestuck Day, so I'm like, well, it's a fucking video game that I was gonna play anyway, so I kinda have to stream it today. Also, yes, hey, I died, how's it going? I mean, if you don't, if you wanna check out, you know, don't feel bad, I understand. Homestuck's not for everybody, but hopefully maybe you can enjoy it. We'll see. Anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, da, 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 down a flight of stairs. It's hard to see. There are torches along the wall ahead. A monstrous noise rumbles below. Ah, uh, yeah. If you go to cons, it's almost impossible to have never encountered the Homestuck fandom. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of cons. If you're going to, like, a gun convention, maybe not. Don't mind her. She's just hungry. She's always hungry, though. Yeah, there, there are gonna be, like, little subtle things that, like, if you're not familiar with Homestuck, it's, like, they would require a bit of explanation, but... I haven't come- like I said, I played a bit, I've played further than this. Uh, just before I started- like, I downloaded it, like, half an hour ago. Um, anyway, where were we? What's that? You're hungry, too. I have not forgotten. What sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for? Yeah. Good ol' Undertale. You didn't remind her that you're hungry. You thought it, though. Can she read your mind? You hope not. It's going to make this friendship in progress a bit awkward. They're at gun conventions, they need targets. Yeah, I have no idea what her Lucis is. We might get to see it, I don't know. I can't think of any three-eyed animal thing- Well, I mean, they could just make something up for this, because they made up and mashed animals on, on Lucis's- on Lucy before. I'm not sure what the pluralization for that is. I like how the handle's like- That's probably literally some poor troll's fucking horn used as the handle for that fridge. Some poor low blood. They just look like low blood blood on that towel, too. In fact, Looking at this, there's a lot of, uh, trolls have, like, a, a, what's called a hemospectrum, 
So, like, it starts at, like, Rust Red and goes all the way up to Fuchsia, and that's, like, how the society is structured. Um, so, like, depending on where you are, your blood can be different colors. So, ha seeing a bunch of, like, differently colored rainbow stains all over. And, yeah, Alterney is, like, a hellish dystopia. Um, yeah, those, those, those fucking faucet knobs are probably literally from a, an actual troll. And here we are. This is where you will be most useful to me as a friend. Uh, we've panned, we've panned in like different directions every time, I think. Her own little self portrait there. I wonder what her horns are supposed to be, if anything. You look around. With a sense of relief, you see no sign of whatever hungry thing was grumbling down here. You are less relieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shape and size. One of them makes eye contact with you. The boy is the same kind of alien as her, horns and all. He's a dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seems to plead with you. In before Starwipe. In before fucking... Like the... Not the Spurb logo, not the house, but the, uh... The Spirograph wipe. He struggled to say, Hell... Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Helpo! He says. Bald Eagle transition. I don't- I'm not familiar with the bald eagle transition. This got intense very fast. Yeah. Yeah. Helpo! By which I mean, hello of course. Looks like you're the new friend in progress, chosen by the great and beautiful Ardata. She's my savior, my reason for being. I am nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she'd permit it. You turn away from this boy. You don't ever want to hear anything he says ever again. Well, it's... It's not a dating sim, it's a friend sim. So you're trying to engage in friendship. Whatever that might mean. There it's it's like a a tiny tiny game. It's like a dollar nineteen. VN? I don't know what VN means. VN esque. So like we might we might finish this game in this stream. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. So just for a bit of backstory, like, she's a Cerulean Blood, and in general, Cerulean Bloods have, like, mind-reading and mind-control powers. Ah, visual novel. Just read text and see how the story pans out with some dialogue trees to work around. Probably winning. Yeah, 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 like, we've had a couple dialogue choices so far. Um, so, like, the thing is, like, she mind-controlled him to say all that shit. The helpo and all that crap. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Lots of trolls have different sorts of psychic powers, and they tend to, they tend to clump together in certain hemo spectrums, uh, certain areas of the hemo spectrum. So like rust bloods tend to have telekinesis, and uh, I won't go through all of it. Come over here. This is what I need your help with. If you're going to have any value to me as a friend, you're led to a dank corner of this. Well, you're going to call it like you see it. This dungeon. Your new friend has a dungeon full of sad, suffering children, and presumably a monster looking somewhere in he lurking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. Zero Escape and Danganronpa. Yeah, I don't think this is as big and expansive as those. Uh, like, they said they were gonna make a series of these to help sort of, like, fund the additional acts of Hive Swap proper, which is a much- it's- it's like an adventure game, like a 90s style, like, point-and-click adventure. <clears throat> With way more stuff and way more dialogue and graphics and music and etc. Way more cost. Anyway. <clears throat> then again, social beggars like you can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It will save me time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time with it. You doubt this because it's still in its box. Completely, looking completely untouched since it was brought down here. Social beggar. It's a box containing a table. A table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to its surface. I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver in case you need it. I'll assume other required tools are contained within the box. You take the screwdriver with your non-broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. You don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal and friendly banter? Perhaps a sling for your arm, and a remedial balm for your ribs. Still, you open the box without protest. Hold on. Before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. 
Excuse me. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod. Oh, there. That. It looks like her Lucis is some sort of spider monster. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. A video feed comes to life on several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of a screen an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. Other rectangles contain shots of the other kids in cages around the room. You suppose cameras are pointing at them too. You have no idea this friendship came with the perk of instant stardom. Now you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable looking chair facing you and holding a chalice, swishing around some viscous liquid it contains. You have all the parts spread out on the floor, organized according to their labels in the instructions. You try to remember the last time you assembled something like this. You don't recall enjoying it, to be perfectly honest. This doesn't look like it will be fun at all. She frowns, conspicuously. A Twitch streamer. Eh, eh. Not quite. She's like live streaming the suffering of other, other people lower on the hemo spectrum than her. Than her. Dark web. All the web is the dark web on fucking Alternia in before Red Room. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry, is this activity not to your liking? You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. It's what you were born for, you say, as you swish the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Streamed in stream. Forget the thing you just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop in your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. This is you telling her, because she can read your fucking mind. <laughs> yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open the little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. Where can most of these screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. You look at your screwdriver and study the screws. Every single one requires an Allen wrench. Does this even come with an Allen wrench? The instructions seem to suggest it does. The other thing is, like, Alternian had, like, a completely different al alphabet. So, like, trying to read anything would be like, well, get fucked. They had to change it for Hive Swap because of copyright stuff, because originally in Homestuck, Alternian alphabet was literally just the Daedric alphabet from Elder Scrolls turned upside down. And they're just like, ah, we probably can't do that if we're releasing, like, an actual fucking video game that people will pay money for. So, they had to make stuff that kind of looked like that, but... So now, so there are two semi-canon alternate alphabets, I guess. You look around, but don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? Maybe you lost some screws too. Damn it! You begin to sweat. Look around nervously. You check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. You grip the screwdriver a little tighter. You wonder what to do next. Okay. So I've seen a bit of what happens here, and it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't get rejected instantly. Um, and I actually kind of am really interested to see where this one goes. Because I have a feeling this one might not reject us instantly either. I'm not sure if it's like that, where like every wrong option is an instant rejection. I think there might actually be some branching paths. So I'm interested in this one since I already know where it's kind of going. So get the hell out of there. First, you clear your head, clear your head, and try to think innocent thoughts. Fluffy, cl bleh bleh. Fluffy clouds in the sky, ironing some clothes. A winning touchdown pass from the sports. <laughs> Our daughter's long black hair spilling over her cloak. Her- wait, these are not innocent thoughts. Shut it down! Shut it down! There's no time for thinking. You have to act! You hurl the screwdriver at her and run. She calmly lifts a hand towards one of the kids in the cages. The kid tenses up and lifts a hand in the direction of the screwdriver. The screwdriver freezes midair right in front of our daughter's head. So like she's mind controlling one of the other trolls who has telekinesis to use their telekinesis for her. You run up the stairs. She twitches a finger and the cage kid does a full body spasm and the screwdriver goes sailing toward you. It stabs deep into your leg and you buckle over, tumbling backward down the stairs. You're a crumpled heap at the bottom of the stairs, bleeding, and you think your arm is broken in two places now. That didn't seem very friendly to me. Luckily for you, I'm very determined to make this friend to make relationships work. Even ones with people who flee simple furniture assembly projects. She stands over you. You attempt to pull the screwdriver out of your leg, but your entire body locks up. You can't move. She holds an outstretched hand above you. 
You shouldn't try to move yet. And you certainly shouldn't try to pull at that screwdriver. You'll get blood everywhere. To my three little eyes, under the present conditions, it seems to me that only one of us should attempt walking up these stairs. You feel relieved. Perhaps she has some alien means of levitating you up the stairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she has three eyes. Yep. All the trolls have a typing quirk. Um, and yeah, that's hers, obviously. Uh, uh, means of levitating you up the stairs. Wait, no. Your body is tensing up again. It's moving without your permission. You get to your feet without taking the screwdriver out. Wow, that hurts. What is she making you- Wait, what? She can't be. You use both of your arms and all of your strength and pick her up entirely. She did say only one of us will have to be walking up the stairs. Or should be walking up the stairs. The pain from your arm is excruciating. Arms with broken bones are not meant for heavy lifting. The additional weight on the wounded leg isn't great either. You hold her as a groom would hold a bride. She wraps her arms around your neck to hang on to you in what strikes you as an overly familiar manner. She looks directly into your eyes and grins. This is better. Now onward and upward, new friend. <laughs> your legs begin to operate without your consent. They wobble and struggle under the weight. The wound throbs. You lumber back up the long flight of stairs, carrying her all the way. This is about as far as I've gotten. You take her back to the kitchen and set her down in a chair seated at a table. You didn't think I'd forget about dinner time, did you? Let's put your unfriendly behavior behind us. It's a good thing for you that I'm benevolent enough to overlook such disgusting acts of betrayal. You may have noticed I keep several friends in my hive, who I have similarly forgiven. Consider the transgression blood beneath the abattoir. As opposed to river under the er water under the bridge. Blood but wait, what is an abattoir? Hashtag hugged our data. So, wait, what is an abattoir? Uh I don't know. Th th that's probably supposed to be really grisly, but I don't know what an abattoir is. You exhale. Now that she mentions it, yes, you are hungry. Maybe a warm meal will lift your spirits and get this heretofore turbulent friendship back on track. Maybe you'll even get the chance to pull the screwdriver out of your leg. You pull out a chair and attempt to sit down, but your leg locks up, and then you stand again. Apparently this was not the right thing to do. Ah, it's a slaughterhouse. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, but why are you sitting? There's cooking to be done. You stagger mechanically over to the fridge and open it. You pull out a large hawk of some sort of alien mystery meat. You put it on the counter. With your broken arm, you reach in anguish, in anguish for a big dangling meat cleaver. You chop the hawk, wincing with each swing of the cleaver. You now understand hooks? What do you mean hooks? You place the sliced meat in a frying pan, sear it lightly, and serve it on a plate. Very rare. Just the way your new friend likes it. You didn't know that's the way she likes it, but you surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat since technically she's the one doing the cooking. Ooh, excuse me. You put it on the table in front of her, along with a fork and knife beside it. Your muscles relax, as you apparently are allowed to control your own body again. She does n nothing except for look at you with a pleased expression. You eye the meat in front of her, then the meat on the counter, and the chair on the other side of the table. What should you do? Prepare a plate for yourself? Is that what she wants you to do? Well, it looks like you're confused. Isn't it obvious what to do next, under your own volition? A good friend would know what to do. In fact, I don't think a good friend would take nearly as long to decide what the right thing to do next is. Cards and spires. It, it's, it's the holiday. It's the Homestuck holiday. I gotta. I promise we'll get back. Again, this game, I don't think this game is very long. We might not even do the whole stream at this game. We might, you know, exhaust all of it before then. It actually seems to me that a very rude friend would hesitate for as long as you are hesitating. Perhaps someone who is not a friend at all. You begin to sweat again. You clearly don't have much time to make up your mind. If you wait for even a few seconds longer, you will probably be guilty of being a bad friend. Maybe even a dreadful one. 
That's not the type of person you like to think you are. What will you do? Huh. 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 Oh. Oh. Uh. Oh. There are already reviews out? This game is like four hours old. Yeah, it's probably older than that. I was out doing stuff. Feed her. This feels like the only obvious thing to do. She's looking up at you quite expectantly. Expectantly, You reach for the fork with your good arm. You go for the knife with your other- Ow. You can't do it. The arm is much less serviceable when the muscles are being forced via psychic override to disregard the pain response. Or oh, are not being... Yeah. Head oh, psych dedication knows not time. Nevertheless, she looks at you patiently and smiles. That's nice of her, you think? Not to be mad about it? You feel like you're growing closer to your new friend by the minute. Oh, fuck. Double clicked. You put the fork down and pick up the knife with your good arm. You cut the meat into several pieces with a careful sawing motion. Put the knife down and pick up the fork and stab a piece. You put it close to her mouth. She seems pleased. Very good. Nice technique. Well-sized morsels, too. She chews the meat with excellent form. She's very good table manners, you think. When she finishes the pieces, you slice off some more and continue. The meat looks very good. Your mouth is watering, but she doesn't offer any. Oh well. When it's the right time for you to eat too, you're sure she will let you know. The thing I'm curious is like, at this point, how many of these things are supposed to be our thoughts and how many of these are like her injecting thoughts into our mind? We're being like psychically groomed. Ugh. Yep, that's Alternia. It's a pretty fucked up place. Wait, what was she- It looked like there were like stains on the front. I didn't, I didn't quite see the front of what she was wearing. The meal is finished. There's no more meat except for a few pieces of unchewable gristle, which you did not try to feed her. That would be thoughtless. Very bad service. She reclines and steeples her fingers, looking quite pleased with how the evening has gone so far. <laughs> you aren't sure why she's laughing. Did you do something funny? I'm tired of doing the laughing. What a fool! You point at yourself, wondering if she's referring to you. You don't know what you've done that was foolish. If so, you're, st ah. you're also still not sure what she finds so amusing. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is she... Some sort of dr- uh, maybe that's just the design? She's got like a weird cloak? That was a lot of laughter. She pauses her laughter for a minute or two, and slowly begins to frown. A faint blue tear rolls down her cheek, from her bottom eye. The truth is, I don't even know why I'm laughing. This isn't very funny, what's happening here. It was a good dinner. You did a good job, whoever you are. <laughs> Doesn't even- we don't even have a fucking name. She puts her face in both of her hands and sobs quietly. You have no idea what to do about this. You stand there, still holding the fork, feeling a bit useless. There is a lot of pressure, you know? Being so respected and admired for your high status in this world. I didn't ask for this. To be so superior to so many. Much is expected of you. Much is presumed about what your personality will be before you even develop one. <laughs> Stab her. No, that won't end well. Uh, another thing is, um, the higher on the hemo spectrum you are, uh, the more resistant to, like, physical harm you tend to be. Uh, no, you, you'd have to, you'd have to, like, cut this bitch in half. You'd ha you'd have to do a lot more than stab her, or, like, like, stab her, like, directly into her brain, or, like, cut her goddamn heart out. I mean, like, a stabbing might kill her, but... Unlikely. <sighs> the personality before you even develop one. You work hard and build a brand based only on what you think people assume you should be like. Sometimes I wonder, am I even that good at being sinister? Could I be more sinister if I tried harder? Maybe this is not my true calling after all. You begin to offer words of sympathy. This all seems heartbreaking to you. Your poor new friend? But your jaw muscles contract and your mouth shuts involuntarily. 
Broken arm. Broken arm, screwdriver in the leg, broken rib. You guess it's not your turn to speak yet? Okay, that works for you. You like to be a good listener to your friends. But what would happen if I changed my brand? If I stopped being so sinister online? My friends and followers will deride and reject me. My superiors will eat me alive. That might not be, uh, that might not be hyperbole. That might be literal. <laughs> If I show weakness, if I scale back on my bloodthirsty content, I will incur the storm of a wise-ass clown with a hundred million subscribers. Or will I incur the scorn of a wise-ass clown with a hundred billion subscribers? Yeah, probably. Will I be in a cage someday, listening to a fucking fool honk his horn for likes? No. I must persist. How lonely it is to know this is all I can do until the day I leave this planet. Oh yeah, as soon as you hit adulthood on alternate, you're immediately sent off planet to go fight and conquer other planets. I have no material or sensory comforts left for me here. Until I can get on a ship and fly away, pain is my only solace. What a fucking trauma queen. Your hand holding the fort grips it tighter. You're horrified to realize what is in the what it is in the process of doing. Oh my god, is she forcing you into an assisted suicide. No, okay, okay. Just some self-harm. You bring it down on her hand, which is placed flat on the table. She doesn't flinch or react in any way. Three trails of cerulean blood flow from the tines where you pierced your skin. That wasn't friendly, you think, but then you weren't the one who did it, were you? You're so confused. My subscribers are not real friends. They adore me only for my sinister content, the show I provide, my wicked, infectious laughter. I get jealous of them sometimes, because they get to watch my content. It must be thrilling, I think. Maybe. I'm just jealous of them because they get to be people who aren't me. This is fucking deep, I know. Apologies if you cannot relate. She pulls the fork out of her hand. And lays it gently on the plate of gristle you didn't feed her. God, are we gonna have to eat that gristle? People downstairs in their cages aren't my friends either. They act like they're my friends though, and sometimes I even believe it. But they don't really want to be friends with me. Nobody does. The only person who ever really wanted to be my friend, who ever tried to be, is you. Clear your throat and point to yourself innocently. That's it. I've decided. You have passed the test. You will become my friend, officially. As such, I think a reward is in order. You are overjoyed. Your heart starts racing. You can't believe it. A new, real friend! But you don't have much time to enjoy this achievement. Your body is doing something again. You bend down in a strained motion and pick up the plate and fork. You position the plate over your wide open mouth and scrape in all the remaining gristle and begin chewing. It's virtually inedible. Your mouth humors the act of chewing for two seconds, then you swallow all of it whole in one painful gulp. Tastes like friendship. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that was, uh, that was that. I want to see, hold up, because we can plow through this super fucking quick, okay? All the way to the next dress. I want to see what this is, because I haven't seen this. That was, that was pretty fucking dark, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I want to see where, what this option leads us to. You decided it would be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Your friend would probably consider it bad form. You just make do and twist in all the screws by hand as best you can. Broken arm isn't making this any easier. You favor the other one and prop pieces into place precariously, leaning against each other while you nudge them into position with your legs so the screw holds the line. It's really frustrating work, you're not going to lie. As you are twisting in the first screw, the groove slip and the screw gets stuck, but you've already turned it too tight. Now it's hard to get it out. You twist and reverse harder. But your fingers slip and the table pieces start to slide. They're going to fall! You act to catch them, but it's too late. The heavier piece tips over and slams you in the broken ribs on its way to the floor. It hits the floor with a bang, 
A stuck screw pops out and goes bouncing 10 or 15 feet away, settling deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. God, you're probably going to need to get that. You hear a light chuckle. Good. Good. She takes another sip from her chalice and settles even more comfortably into a chair. Is she enjoying this? You think she's enjoying watching you struggle to put this stupid thing together. Maybe a little too much. Nevertheless, you continue. A friend is a friend. You don't like to let your friends down. You've committed yourself to this project. I'm gonna like, can I? Nope, wrong way. Ah, ah, ah! There we go, a bit more centralized. You will get the screw out from under there a bit later. Maybe when you need a final, maybe when you need the final screw. You turn your attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. Place the biggest part, the table platform, flat on the floor. The legs would be pointing upward if they weren't, if they were attached. Position one leg in the right spot in alignment with the holes. Sit on the table platform and steady the legs with your feet. You grab another screw and concentrate. <laughs> she sounds so pleased. It's strange, you admit, watching for this sort of activity to make someone so happy. For watching the that, whatever. But you also have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually, to feel useful, wanted, important even, only somewhat menially, to get a new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve her life. What even is that? It's just like some dude laughing. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice one of the cage kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly sliding out from it from underneath its hiding place. Nice! Everyone's working like a team down here. Ardada does not look at the kid, but sneers a bit. She reaches toward him, and he appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, you notice the screw slowly slide back under the thing. She releases him from his breathing problems, resumes her pleasant expression, and takes another sip from the chalice. You guess that was against the rules? You decide to make a note of it. Your friend runs a tight ship down here. You respect that. About an, hour about an hour later, you have all four legs on, plus some other accoutrements attached. You wrestle mightily with the thing to get it upright, using only your good arm. Seems she may have forgotten about the final missing screw. You doubt the table needs it. You decide you won't bring it up if she won't. Ah, but she can read your mind, motherfucker. You give it a test. It's pretty wobbly since you were only able to tighten the screws with your bare fingers. But again, she doesn't seem to mind. She reclines. Has a look on her face which makes her appear absolutely enamored of your handiwork. She has finished her drink. The chalice is on a side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor toward her. Looks like some sort of spider. The size of an average dog. Its abdomen is preposterously large. Actually, you'd think it's a huge tick? That's what it looks like. Ah, I see. So that would be her loosest there. Settles just in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. Settles under their weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? Oh, right, and this table was made for... Suspicious it looked like it was made for strapping people onto... Hold up, I'm... All this talking. All this line reading! I gotta slurp. I gotta get my slurp on. You shrug and sit down on the rather rickety table. You're about to lie down, but she interrupts you. No. You fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. You stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at the cage kid, she raises an arm toward him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his own cage, which apparently wasn't locked? He shuffles vacantly over to your table and lies down on its surface. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do. Oh, this is gonna get, uh... Hmm. What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? You aren't sure what table stickball is. Oh, you really are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of arena stickball, played on a table. Got it? You don't, but you nod. Now, go to it. <laughs> you shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do, since the thing comes fitted with shackles. She gets up and lifts her huge, tick-like pet. It makes more grumpy noises. I thought you'd play table stickball. Aw, aw, sad Pepe. She plops the enormous thing. Oh god, she's feeding it. She plops the enormous thing right down on the kid's chest. 
He appears rendered unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark rust-colored blood dribbles from the place where it was attached to the boy's neck. <laughs> Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process. Proud almost. Then she looks to at you expectantly. Well, you don't know what she means. The final screw. Is this gonna get like saw? Are we gonna have to like put it in this kid? Aren't you going to retrieve it and screw it into wherever it needs to go? The job isn't done. I don't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Of course. What were you thinking? You should have known your friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it would. I want to play table stickball. We all want to play table stickball. Spoilers? Um, I'm pretty sure table stickball is billiards. Pretty sure. Because arena stickball is like some goofy, like, big, like, slightly baseball-like game, except all the, like, it's all based around billiards. Um, so I think table stickball might actually just be billiards. Or pool, as however you want to say it. Alright, oh, I just read that. You stoop very low to the ground, on your knees, placing your cheek just above the floor. You peer under the large edifice. It's dark in there. It goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn, darn little screw to roll. Darn. Darn and Greg. You take a few pitiful swipes with your good arm, but come up empty. Must be further back. You think you can see it? Yeah, that must be it. Just a little further. Stickball is baseball. Arena stickball is not baseball. I can tell you that much. There's uh, it involves thermonuclear devices and wild animals. <laughs> like if uh, yeah, I think that's the eight ball. If the eight ball gets like hit or knocked out of the arena or something, it detonates, killing all the players and the audience in the fucking stands. It's a uh, it's like baseball, but Alternian Arena Stickball is not baseball. <laughs> you take a few pitiful swipes with your other uh, did it read that. You have an idea. A tool would be helpful. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. Hmm. How did she know? Your friend must be very wise. You think you're liking her more every minute. So, baseball. I've never seen a nuke go off in a baseball game. Just saying. Higher stakes are the best stakes. The stakes are the highest. Yeah, a lot of people die in arena stickball. You grab the screwdriver and feel around with it. You- yes! You got it, you think! You carefully scrape it closer to yourself and then pick it up. Then go back to the table and find the one remaining hole you left unscrewed. You slide under the table as- oh, is it like gonna like go up into his back or something? And just like put him in an uncomfortable position? You slide under the table as a mechanic would with a car. There it is. The table is creaking and wobbling quite a bit now. The tick is really getting into its dinner, it seems. Oh, fuck, that's all still happening. All the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. You only watch Canadian baseball, have you? Our hockey's not tamer. Our hockey's not tamer. <laughs> I'll, 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 gi I'll, I'll give you that, like, that's the one exception. Like, there's a reason, there's a reason lots of hockey players don't have teeth. Or are missing teeth. And it's not from the pucks. Ardana has returned to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some settings on the feed, controlling the zoom of the camera, and typing some remarks into a chat window. <laughs> this is very good material today. Oh fuck. Double clicky piece of shit. It's not often that I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. So there are people watching all this shit. And I've been watching for an hour. Jesus Christ. Go on. Complete your project. What's hockey, hockey hashtag trolling? Well right now she's hashtag trolling. Cause she's a troll. Bazinga. This will be very good. You still think it's weird that she likes watching you put furniture together so much, but you're not one to judge friends. It sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. You screw in the final screw, but the stresses on the table are causing the holes to be misaligned. This won't be easy. 
Huge stick shifts its grotesque body above you, causing the table to creak loudly. God, this is gonna end terribly. You nervously slide halfway out from the table to check it out. Then a loud pop. And the sound of scraping metal, six or seven screws shoot out from the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is, you think, a little too late. You really needed that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically out from underneath it at once, like a baby deer on ice. The table platform comes crushing down on your lower torso, breaking your pelvis. You bellow in pain and flail to pull yourself out. Jesus. Oh yeah, I don't even know how to do bot stuff. I think I've been going for about 50 minutes. Oh shit, that's- is that our blood or is that the kid's blood? Uh, I don't know. Our blood would probably be colored a little brighter than this. You forget that you're still holding the screwdriver. In your desperate flailing, you plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the tick, which begins gushing rust blood with great force, spraying the Oh. Well, it's pretty bad to stab her loses. You can find on Twitch, they have Twitch channels themselves. I'll see if I can figure it out tonight after the stream. The beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming. You can't see your new friend due to the blood in your eyes. You can't, Im can't imagine she's thrilled about what's going on here. Even now, your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso out from under the shitty table. You have an idea. All you'd have to do is go to the boss channel and do like... Okay. I didn't realize it was... I thought I had to do like... Programming stuff and like set shit up and like have scripts and crap running. I'm not sure I killed the tick, but I definitely fucked it up. <laughs> Your channel has a button you don't even stream. Alright. It's, it's my fault, I honestly haven't even really looked into it. It's a thing I keep forgetting to do. Your broken arm, you start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling, Yeehaw! You close the screwdriver handle with your other hand. I mean, I guess he's trying to be entertaining. <laughs> Start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling yeehaw. Oh. Wait, who was that? Was that her or was that the other one? The other kid? Or I guess he's probably still strapped down. The blood gushing monster starts kicking and rearing, then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig at a rodeo. You hold on for dear night, dear life, still blind, but your plan works. You've been pulled out from under the, the tomb. You've spent the last hour constructing for yourself. Fuck, I, I still can't see that. I think that was her. Your pelvis is in ruins, but at least you're free now and riding like the wind. And at, as you and the blood spewing tit go tearing around the room, crashing into stuff, you hear a boy crying. Fuck, I missed it again. Some bots like Electrical Skateboard and Thronezilla just join small channels to increase viewer count and offer hosting potential. You guess Ardada became distracted enough by your foolish display to cease her penalization method on him. Maybe distracted is the wrong word. Maybe she's disappointed by your foolishness? Oh god, he might be blowing it right now. The tick swerves suddenly and starts running up the stairs. Ow, 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 your brittle pelvis feels every step on the way up. It careens through the rest of the hive, crashes through the front door, and then comes to a sudden halt. You're catapulted violently over its backside and sail 50 yards through the air. It's 150 feet, that's a long-ass way to go. You land on your ass and wipe the blood from your eyes. Okay, this was embarrassing. Everyone makes mistakes, right? You can still salvage this friendship. You know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. Ardana is standing in her doorway with a furious look on her face. She is flipping you off. You will not be my friend. That was still pretty good. That was still pretty good. Alright, so that's Ardana all done. Bap, 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 bap. Oh, I hit the windows key. Let's check out this guy. Let's check out Hot Dog Boy. And he's got like a hot dog grub. It's like all their food is grubs. No friend. Ah, we, 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 we figured out the right path, so. And that was pretty funny. Fucking slap its gigantic ass yelling yeehaw. Yes, yeah, someone is approaching. Grace Gandaling with a cozy looking hoodie. Perhaps they will make for a good friend. Oh, I see. His typing quirk is like he makes it so that like all his sentences are like in a hot dog, like it's a hot dog. He's got. He's just a hot dog boy. He's just a befreckled hot dog boy. Oof. Hang on, sorry. I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird looking. Kind of uncom. Kind of uncomfortable about this. 
Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and- Oh, this is the same text. Yeah, wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. He seems promising. Eh. Hungry, huh? I mean, you are, you are a hot dog boy. I see what your game is. You aren't sure what he's talking about. Then your eyes drift toward the obvious target. An exquisite hot dog he's holding. Looks really, really good. Your mouth starts with- Oh my god, is that his Lucis? Probably not, all the Lucises are like, pure white color. His horns are sausages too, yep. Your mouth starts watering noticeably. Ah oh, no! I knew it! You're just like all the rest. Your gender is to have me re relinquish my delicacy. Well forget it! I've been tricked out of two other oblong meat products this week already. I know you probably think I'm an easy mark in my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. You don't know anything about his blood color, or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. You're hungry, sure, but you didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All you really want to do is make a new buddy, so you don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. I just want a friend, and not my sweet meat. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful. Folks tend to get greedy. Get a greedy look in their eyes around my warm sausage. These are odd ways to express the things he's saying, you think. But that would be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the subject. Get this blossoming friendship moving in the right direction. God, did it like get louder? Or I guess his music theme is just like more obnoxious. Well, I think this will be an immediate and end ship end ship forget it i leave you forever bye disrespectful i just wanted those sweet meats please give me those sweet meats all right ask if he lives nearby yeah or i used to i mean my place was bombed by drones a while ago now i don't have a hive but I'm making it work out here. Forging for tasty things where I can. I've gotten pretty good at it. Talking people into giving me meat products, I mean. <laughs> the euphemisms. The euphemisms. I'd like you to give me some of your meat products. You quickly feel a sense of pity for your new friend. He thought you had it rough, crash landing here, hungry and friendless. And come to think of it, Feels like your arm is broken. Your ribs too, maybe. But enough self-pity. It's about making a new great friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh wait! Are we friends now? Like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we slow it down a bit, see how things go. Not saying it's out of the question. I just think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. Someone I trust, you know? Not just another looky loo gunning for my... Delicacy. Oh damn. You got out over You got out over your skis again. I don't know what the fuck that means. Of course he's right. This is totally reasonable. You feel sure you can do what it takes to win him over. You make a mental note to avoid looking at or mentioning his hot dog, since it seems to be such a sensitive sh 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 uh, hot dogs. Man, now I'm fucking hungry. I can go for a hot dog. I'm definitely eyeing his sweet meat product. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. You are aggressively not looking at it, in fact. Don't think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's working. You aren't thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one. And no one ever even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice, on some prime level, your current non-hot dog mindset. He smiles. You pay closer attention to the boy's face. It's a nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles here and there. Mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. What a nice friend this would be to have, you think. He's kind of adorable, really. If you disregard the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Jesus. Okay, wait a minute. You don't want to start thinking about thinking thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down a little. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend. Nothing more. Don't want a hot dog friend? 
share some hot dogs. She tried to spark up some non-meat related conversation soon, before things get awkward. I wonder about his house. It got bombed? Yeah, you know. Routine drones pass through my hood. A little bombing, a little calling. That's how it goes around here. I was the lucky one. When I lose this, not so much. He's a goner. You don't know what a Lucis is, but you can deduce it's someone important to him. He probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide rightly to you decide the right play is to show some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes I think I enjoy savory buns and delights as a way of covering up the pain. They're so good though. It's hard to stop. Also, I favored the juicy meats before he died anyway. Oh boy, Th that this isn't gonna stop. I don't think <laughs> it doesn't stop from keep happening. It's something we did together. How did we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it, please, dude. Don't bring it up again. You didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy is clearly grieving. You see two faint red tears roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can't take it. You have to console this homeless boy somehow. Then he'll definitely be your friend. But, what to do? You open your arms and approach him with a posture of great compassion. You furrow your brow upward a bit as if to say, I know. I know how hard it is. You advance and he leans backward a little, as if caught off guard by your sympathy. Maybe you're coming on too strong? But you know there's no turning back now. You don't just throw the brakes on an imminent heartfelt hug like this. You embrace him awkwardly, and it goes well for a moment, so you realize your arm is broken, and it seizes up reflexively in pain. It jostles the hot dog in his hand, and he bobbles it. You both grasp, you try and detach from the hug so you can catch the dog, but it's already on its way to the ground! In your attempt to save it, you stagger backward and slip, the hot dog smushed under your big dumb ass the moment it makes contact with the ground. Demon lets out a shriek. No! Oh, dude! Dude, my dog! You scramble to get up, hoping you're not as owned as it looks, but your feet keep slipping and your butt keeps grinding the hot dog into the mud. Uh, when the carnage finally subsides, you roll over and check it out. It's completely unsalvageable. Just a gross, meaty mud mash. God! Like the hot dog never even existed. DM and howls in agony and slumps backward against the tree. Oh no. You fucked this up so bad. That's it, man. I've lost everything. I'm not sure what the point is of even living anymore. You're absolutely mortified by your clumsiness and foolishness. You have a feeling you'll be thinking about this moment for years to come. During those insecure moments when your mind seems to be looking for any excuse to make yourself cringe with self-doubt and shame. Still, you can't help but feel the guy's being a little unreasonable. It's just one hot dog. There are probably plenty more of those to come by, for those who know where to look in this strange world. He himself said he makes a habit of enjoying these, so they can't be all that uncommon. Maybe he just has an unusual psychological disorder surrounding a fixation in this particular food item. Yes, that could be it. Poor guy. It just means he needs your support as a friend all the more. You won't give up on your friend, or for that matter, people who you're trying to desperately to become friends with. That just isn't who you are as a person. Man, there's a lot more fucking narration on your own thoughts and a lot less dialogue from this troll than there was from Ardata. You have an idea? You run up by him with a sense of optimism and salesmanship. The past is behind you. There's no need to wallow in self-incrimination and guilt over the hot dog incident. Demon perks up a little. You... You wanna help me get another hot dog? Absolutely! It could be a fun adventure, you say. Something to bond over, to bring two new buddies closer together. Okay, you don't say that out loud, but you really hope it's true. I don't know. It could be a long shot. Sometimes it could be days before I'm united with another plump treat. Glistening with perspiration. <laughs> Steaming, relaxing comfortably in a soft melt-in-your-mouth loaf. Damn. Now I really want a hot dog. Guess I don't have much choice but to take you up on your offer, do I? What do you have in mind? It's a good question. 
You haven't made a plan yet, and frankly, don't even know where to begin. But he's interested in spending more time with you, which is the most important thing. To figure something out. Do hot dogs perspirate? Looks like when you've had them, like, um... Not on a grill, but like... Like at 7-Eleven, or like a convenience store, or they're on, the, on those rollers, they're just like, covered in like... Yeah, they, they like, they kinda do, cause like, the liquid like, actually comes out and seeps through the skin. Cause like, the, you've never seen like, what I could only describe as a sweaty looking hot dog. That's like, that's like, that's a New York Frank right there. Um... Yeah, it's like the hot dog juice is like, actually being like, cooked and bubbling out of it. So I guess they do kind of perspire. Your sign of display of confidence is called for here. A real show of leadership to improve morale. You smile, hold your head up high, and tell them to follow you. You know exactly what to do. Well, not really, but you give no indication of that at all. He's definitely intrigued. You've got him hooked now, you think. Probably wondering if he hit Pater, finding a new friend with THE hot dog hookup. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where to find a hot dog, but you've got to admit, you're enjoying the feeling of being important and valued by a potential friend. You don't want to do anything underhanded, yet you can't help but feel you should probably milk the social gambit for all it's worth. This way, you say, to begin marching confidently in a random direction. He obediently follows and begins rubbing his tummy. You begin to feel nervous almost immediately. You have absolutely no idea how this is going to play out, or if it stands any chance of resulting in a hot dog at the end of the journey. Oh well, I'll figure something out along the way. You lead him through streets and winding through the yards of strange looking houses, and he follows. He takes care to make sure you both are not seen, which could get you both in trouble. Apparently, uh, apparently, the improvised circuitous route appears to provoke his suspicion. Dude, are you sure you know where a dog is? It seems like maybe you're lost. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely sure you know where to find one, you say. You're just throwing on anyone off the trail who might have been following you. He nods solemnly, as if it makes perfect sense. Whew. But you can't keep him guessing like this forever. You gotta do something. Take some bold action to keep his interest in his wiener quest. <laughs> you say, this way, down here. This is another shortcut to the hot dog supply you're privy to. It's the mother load. Um, in the sewer? Yes, totally. It's just a short trek through the sewer. Shouldn't be more than another hour, or several, of sewer trudging. That is, if he still has the will to do what it takes to get his hands on more juicy dogs. Oh, hell yeah! You know it. After you, man. An hour later, you're so deep in the sewer you've lost all bearing and sense of direction. You could be anywhere by now. You've taken so many crazy turns. Still, you don't let up for a second that you're lost. You made each turn with decisive conviction. He's still following you. But now he's having trouble keeping up. He's out of breath and struggling with the foul smell. Can't say you're enjoying the. Can't say you're enjoying it much either. I think I'm reading this a little fast. But you can't let on to the fact that the. My whole brain can't process the words. But you can't let on to the fact that what you're doing now is anything other than the most casual routine for you. Like you do this every day, just a quick jaunt through the sewer to hit up this vast mythical trove of meat products. Okay, when you put it that way, maybe this all sounds a bit insane? Still, you're in too deep to second guess yourself now. Hey! I gotta... I gotta stop and rest. I can't lie. I'm starving for a heavenly frankfurter. This might be too much for me. I don't think I'm cut for this. You pause and look back. He's sitting down now, slumped against a filthy sewer wall. You're intensely relieved to see you may have just won the impromptu game of sewer hot dog chicken. More importantly than that, this looks like an ideal time to show some th sympathy. Have a bonding moment with your would-be friend. You sit next to him, and with your broken arm, put a hand on his knee in a platonic, but deeply understanding way. Your arm hurts when you do this, but it's worth it. Every little gesture counts. Gesture. Jester? Every little gesture counts when making a new friend. That's how you make friends. Offer them a tiny gesture. I just... I kinda suck. My looseness is gone, I don't have any skills, and most people think I'm weird for liking hot dogs so much. I'm probably just going to get cold. I'm not good at going on adventures or doing anything hard. 
on good at is finding an easy meal here and there. However, I can get it. Like talking people out of their fine sausages using tricks or other ploys which end up losing me friends. It's been unthinkable that anyone that would actually do anything nice for me would want me to have that sweet, sweet meat I desire. At least it was unthinkable. Until now. Your heart begins to race. Could it be? Is... Is this shitty improvised sewer escapade actually working? You can't believe it. Nobody's ever done so much or worked so hard to try to get my hands on another magnificent banger. Sorry for being emotional, like... But, like, this is new for me. I didn't know how to handle it. I'm... I'm just so... so grateful. I'd be thrilled to call you a friend, man. Whatever you are. You're overjoyed! <laughs> what the actual hell ass? This is the Hive Swap Friend Sim. Came out today, 4.13. So, I'm fucking streaming it. You've missed almost all of it. Because it's not that long a game. You're overjoyed! Unbelievable! It's almost too good to be true! What now? It's such a sudden turn of good fortune. You hardly know what to do. Should... Should you hug the guy? This it'll, it'll be uploaded on YouTube in... Maybe like four or five days? I need to check, because there's stuff in the queue. Last time that didn't go so well, but this time he's not holding a hot dog for you to clumsily defile, so maybe this is your moment. Wait. What's that? A deep rumbling sound begins to echo through the tunnels. Oh shit! They found us! It's a drone, dude! I guess I'm like, sewer duty? We gotta run! He gets up, grabs your hand, and sprints. He's a lot faster than he looks when motivated to get moving. He turns this way and that as the rumbling gets closer. But he slips on something and you both tumble into a river of horrific sludge. Bro! I can't swim! Help! Your bad arm finds purchase on the ledge, and though it's very painful, you heroically salvage your friend from the muck with the other arm. He coughs and gasps for breath. You find a nearby ladder, shove him upward until he starts climbing on his own, and follow him. You bust through a lid on the floor, you both flop out of the hole, drenched in filth, smelling horrible and completely exhausted. But at least you're safe, you think. Hey man, I just want you to know, even though we didn't find the glorious treasure you were leading us to, I'm happy how it all turned out. Maybe I don't need hot dogs in my life as much as I thought. Maybe that's not the real treasure after all. See a quiet place? I don't know what that is. It's been a journey for me, let me tell you. I'm learning so much about myself, about life, because of you. His bushy hair is slicked back from his eyes due to the sludge. He's giving you a penetrating, soulful gaze. Presumably, pure friendship. Or is it even deeper than that? Wow, this is intense. Uh, it's pretty good, not so scary though. Not the journey experiences you had along the way. Mostly silent, everyone just signed most of the movie. It was pretty good. Interesting. Then, something catches your eye, just above him. Something dangling. Lots of dangling things, actually. Come to think of it, it's really cold and- <gasps> Have we found the frozen meats? Finally realize, holy shit, you're a weird alien meat locker. You're absolutely surrounded by dangling meat products, including many sausages, thousands of them. You begin to sob. Your sobbing turns to- your sobbing soon turns to unrestrained wailing of raw catharsis. He joins you. The tears flow freely from you both. You embrace each other and let it all out. Suddenly it hits you. Both of you. This is by far the happiest day of your life. Meet heaven! We made it to meet heaven. Surrounded by wieners. No kissing, this is the friendship sim. Because friendship is the most important thing. Okay, we have another little path that we didn't try. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, after he lives nearby, give him a friendly pat on the back. Because last time we gave him a hug. You keep it simple. You pat him on the back, a nice, a couple times. Everything's going to be okay. Since you're his new friend, or at least working toward earning that status, 
He has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. Yeah, I mean, may as well do a full playthrough. We're already like nine tenths of the way there. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together. Your friendly gesture worked. You're right. I shouldn't let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I can live off the land for the rest of my life. Scrounging for sumptuous indulgences wherever I may find them. By rummaging through awful drums or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I'll miss my Lucis, but I think he would be proud of me. If I can make it without him, if I can survive on my own, I know he would be proud. Maybe I don't even need to leave the planet. Maybe I can avoid taking the ordeals altogether. You can't test what you can't find. If I play my cards right, I can probably live to ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. <clears throat> I like hiding in alleys and sewers, scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. Honestly, I don't even need to get by that long since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. So I think I might be able to make this work. Past gets you down. It's the future you gotta worry about. That's fresh pain and misery you haven't experienced yet. You were confused at the last remark, but again, you don't want to be impolite. He holds up his hand as if to tell you not to bother. I can tell you're not from here. It's okay. Rust bloods don't live a long time. Blood classes higher than me live progressively longer the higher you go up. Sea dwellers live basically forever. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it works. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle into a short ride, keep a low profile, take in some good meat along the way. Nothing wrong with that life if you ask me. You understand. It seems like a tragic story. If your friend has made peace, peace with his destiny, you might as well too. You offer a sympathetic shrug, and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds not looking at his hot dog at all. He smiles again. He seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog a little less tightly. That's good. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude toward meaty delights. Oh hey, that's not in yellow. I found a bug. To be strange and off-putting. We're not given any exact numbers, it's, I think they said, like, two dozen sweeps tops, which is like 50-something. Or maybe it was one dozen sweeps, which is like 30-ish. I heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. Whew. There's some past personal traumas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. <clears throat> Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me. No offense, but you are. Drones would vaporize a homeless- oh, A hornless goof like you, no questions asked. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. You laugh it off. You're not scared, you say. You've survived worse. You pat your broken ribs and wince. You clutch your sore ribs with your broken arm and wince even harder because of that. Oh man, looks like that arm hurts, huh? I guess it's broken. Let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this a second. He hands you the hot dog without hesitation. Oh wow, he wants you to hold it? This is such a remarkable gesture of trust, you're overwhelmed. You gingerly take the hot dog with your good arm, being very careful. You hold the hot dog from beneath with your fingertips, as if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. Then he takes off his shirt. You avert your eyes for a moment, then realize that's silly. Nothing particular and decent about this, you suppose. If he's comfortable, so are you. And then he puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you, and hands you the shirt. Here, make a sling out of it. That should help. I mean, it would be difficult to make a sling, like, with one arm. He's right, it does help. Your broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. His shirt smells like meat, too. You can't tell if you think that's a bonus, or if it's weird. You decide it's a bonus. This is your new friend. He loves meat, and so do you. It's your greatest common interest, in fact. Nice. 
You know, I think we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm ready to officially call you my friend yet. But maybe, but I may be getting close. You're pushing all the right buttons, man, just being someone who listens and understands. Yeah, our daughter was, uh... Something. You have no idea how much that means to me. Like, I think I enjoyed going through her shit because it was real fucked up. Whereas this is just like a happy hot dog boy with a lot of sexual innuendo. Which is it's fun in its own way. You're so happy to hear this. It makes your heart sing. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just a little strange. Like, maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly. By his Lucis, you guess? You think that might be his dad, but again, you don't dare ask. Not when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why kill the mood? He gets a little closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. For the briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes, regarding you fondly. Ah, there it is. There's a meme callback. Specifically to Problem Sleuth and Fondly Regard Creation. Your heart beats a little faster. This boy is named Demon. Sounds like someone who die fast. Die men? <laughs> oh, I guess you could pronounce it that way. Yeah. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You're... You're starting to wonder if all he's interested in is friendship. You hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship, or real companionship of any sort. That's moving pretty fast for you. You're too, too nervous to make your feelings clear on all this. If he goes any further, you're not sure if you'll have the will to protest. Listen, dude. This gorgeous meat product we both admire? I'm thinking, maybe we share it. I think that sounds good, actually. Oh my, yes. That sounds wonderful. You're so hungry. You're beside yourself with gratitude that Diamond is willing to share with you something so precious to him. It really means a lot. Here. I have an idea. I'm 90% I'm sure I know where this is fucking going. They're gonna fucking, like, Lady in, Tra Lady in the Tramp this fucking hot dog. She brings his face. Or what's the, the, the Pocky thing? He brings his face close to yours. He holds the hot dog up between your faces. <laughs> It couldn't, it couldn't get more overtly homoerotic, being a fucking hot dog. He brings his face close to yours. He holds the hot dog up between your faces with both ends of the dog, pointing at his mouth and yours. You're not sure what he wants you to do, really. You're not sure what he wants you to do. You can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants you to... <laughs> I called it. I called it! Thank you, hussy. Oh, it's actually referred to as a hot dog here. Yes. Pressed on it, you'd agree the act is uncomfortably erotic. This is just like the last time where we were given a choice and it was one choice. The choice was feed her the meat. This time we get to share in the meat. Jesus Christ. There's so much fixation with meat in this fucking game. God damn it, hussy. But you have to admit, it is a good way to share a food item whilst ensuring it gets split about evenly. You absolutely loathe the idea of letting a friend down. It's completely at odds with your values as a person. Jeez. You chomp down on your end of the hot dog as he does with his and simultaneously. Holy shit. That is so good. You take another bite, and he times his bite perfectly. He's eerily good at this game. It's throwing off your chewing a bit. It makes you cough a little when you swallow. But you don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rhythm with him. Might be what a bad friend would do. You keep going, without really quite swallowing as you go. You get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you aren't sure how you're going to handle. You haven't planned for it, and it's coming up fast. The hot dog backlog collecting in your throat is getting a bit too- Oh god, this is gonna end badly. This is gonna end really badly with all the hot dog that has gone unswallowed. So you try to swallow, but you can't. You gag and cough. 
put all the chewed hot dog matter explosively into his face. Oh my fucking god, he recoils, <laughs> absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you with wide eyes. Hot dog and bun bits are all over his face. He says nothing for a moment, then puts his hands to his throat. Oh fuck, he's choking. He points at his mouth desperately. You need to do something. The Heimlich, of course. That's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life! You get behind him and put your good arm around his belly and form a fist. You plunge the fist into his ribs, trying to dislodge his mastic <laughs> this masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. It really hurts, though. You'll have to make the sacrifice for your friend. Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick you into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. You're not sure how you'll navigate this tricky subject once he's breathing again, but you'll deal with that later. Why does my fucking finger hurt so much? I must have wanged it on something. Uh, right now, you have a life to save. You pull your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze! You try and try. His face is turning, well, not blue, deep red? You guess because his blood is rust colored. Sure, that makes sense. You yank one more time, your broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge gob of chewed hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball, and the expulsion creates enough force in the other direction to cause you to actually lift him up into the air and accidentally <laughs> suplex him into the mud behind you. You in turn go tumbling over him. The two of you are soon locked into an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll down the grassy incline towards a nearby neighborhood, toward a street. He didn't have legs. Luckily, you stopped just short of the street, but Demian's neck lands right on the sharp edge of the curb, and after flipping in the air once or twice, you come right down on his face with your big ass and hear a crack. Demon? You slap his cheek a little. No response. He's not breathing. You check his mouth. His throat is clear of hot dog debris. Oh god. This can't be happening. You look around, panic. This isn't what you need right now. All you wanted is a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. Are we gonna get an oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god? You have to hide the body. You see a couple kids creeping out of nearby houses to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You've gotta find a bush or something. There. Over there. Looks like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. You drag the vested shirtless carcass. Oh yeah, he took it. He wasn't wearing a fucking shirt the whole time. You dump the body in the bush and it's really not convincing. It looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush. It's a poor attempt to conceal a murder. You gotta come up with a better- Wait a minute. Someone is standing behind you. Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. You killed him. And there it is. And that's uh that's Hive Swap Friendship Simulator Volume 1. Well, it's only 1.30, so I guess it's time to, uh, there's like no quit button. I guess I just hit the X button in the top. And then it says it's stopped working. Whatever. Alright. Let's fucking flip this shit back on over to our regularly scheduled programming. That was pretty good. For like the dollar nineteen it cost. Worth. Okay, I have to solve from playing my own stream. You missed most of it too. Um, I am gonna keep the title as Happy Four Thirteen because Happy Four Thirteen. Uh, change the communities to Rogue Like and Card Cards. All right, and we switch back over from Slay the Spire to, or from High Swap to Slay the Spire. Oh God, oh God. Wait, is this right? Hold up. Okay, okay, good. It is right. I forgot I'd change this. Well, it won't be DLC, it'll just be volume two. 
Which will have two more of the, uh, the trolls. Fucking YouTube trying to tell me bullshit. What the fuck is the daily climb on this day? Yeah, it's, uh, it's technically April 14th now, but fuck him. Mmm. <coughs> Start with one rare relic. If by one rare relic you mean the exact same relic every fucking time, so you may as well just goddamn tell me. Turn each combat with three strength. Oh. There, I did the 2-2. Two, two. Card rewards contain- okay. Whoops. Should be doable. Depending on what the relic is and depending on how the seed goes. Time for a challenge! Really? Mango. I get mango. Mango. Uh, hit up this elite. Mm, fuck, that's a lot of elites. I lost two elites. I also split that way. Hit another fire if I need to. Yeah, I like this path right here. What do we got? We got one dead motherfucker. I could have just used two strikes, killed him, used another strike on the we're, we're, we're just we're just refucking starting. <laughs> yeah. Time for challenge, blah 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 blah. Yep. It's it's just the mango. Alright, let's do this uh fucking prop. Wait, what did Oh three strength! Ooh. Right. Ugh. That's gonna be rough. I guess the 94 extra HP is actually pretty good then. Or the 14 extra HP, I guess I should say. Considering everything does more damage. You failed on an Act 2 boss. Could be rough. Do we really need flex? Well, I mean, Body Slam doesn't work without other good stuff, so... Alright, the big scare- mm -hmm. Hold up. No, I'll just- I'll just make damn sure he's dead next turn. Take the 14. We'll heal most of it. Get out of my fucking house. Right, they changed how this work. Your first run scores will count- I don't give a shit. Did they buff Cleave? Uh, I don't think I want that. Game can be rough, but you'll get a feel for what kind of deck you're being given in time. Remove a card. Well, we've got more offensive stuff, so get rid of the strike. Get out of my face. Would it be better to try transforming a card, maybe? I guess it's up to RNG, but since the RNG is the same, Might actually be worth trying here. Good old drop kick. Oh fuck! I'm removing, not upgrading. <laughs> Almost made a bad decision. The thing is, is like having these two extra cards already makes blocks less likely to occur, even without removing them. So without uh, better block cards to replace them with, I do not want to get rid of them. All right. Okay, gonna fight the big boy. Well, this will already fucking wake him up, so... <sighs> He's gonna hit pretty fucking hard, and there's not much I can do about it. Five block barely seems worth it. Um, a weak potion might be worth it, though. Especially since he is, what, attack, attack, debuff? Yikes. I'm an idiot. I should have just played three defense. Yeah. We'll be fine. We got this. He's dead. Okay. Yeah, I'll take the ghostly armor. Don't really need to nap. Sure. Since things have since things start are starting with three strength, I think upgrading that, even though it already gives a lot of block, I think upgrading that early is not a terrible idea. If I go this way, I get two question marks. 
I think I'm gonna go to the Elise just to see what... What stuff I can get out of them. Ancient Tea Set's not that great. Uh, well, I guess I just play my whole hand. Whatever, 23 blocks, sure. And then kill the louse! Yep. Kill the mouse. What do we got? Mmm. Eh. I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I'll take bloodletting. Alright, asshole. Uh, or assholes. Okay, well, we can do this. Well, they've got the artifact, so I think this is probably better. Yep. Those dazes are going to be rough because we don't have a very big deck. Um, well, yeah, not much point in bloodletting here, I don't think. Just going to have to eat shit. They buff cleave and a few other cards I can't remember. That's good. Mmm. Mmm. Juicy. Alright, well, at least we can block all the bullshit. God, I miss ice cream. I think ice cream is my favorite relic. I love ice cream. Uh, alright, well, we kill one of you assholes and then block the rest. Okay, okay. Works out pretty well. The dazes are coming less often now, though. I'm gonna have to be drawing them a whole shitload. Good, 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 good. I haven't needed that bloodletting yet. Oh shit, I should have stopped the recording and started it again. Uh, I'll do that right now. <laughs>